You're listening to the Nacho Kids Podcast, where we discuss all things step family related, real stories, real people, real help. Your hosts are the creators of the Nacho Kids Method and the Nacho Kids Academy Step Family Coaching Team, Lori and David Sims. Welcome to episode one of the Nacho Kids Podcast. I am David Sims with my lovely wife, Lori Sims. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. I know. So in this first episode of the podcast, we're going to talk about our journey and what a hellacious journey <laughs> it has been Ooh. to get to this point. And of course, you know, we can't talk about all of it. We don't have all day, but we are going to give kind of a, a quick rundown of, you know, how things were when we first got together and got married and then how it all kind of went to crap. And then now, years later, (laughs) here we are with a nachokids.com website, Nacho Kids Academy membership training site, coaching site. And then now we're doing a podcast. It's crazy. It is crazy. You know, when we were going through all the problems, it was like we didn't even know if we were going to make it. And now we're here helping other people get through their problems. So That's why we went through it. It has come full circle. So let's start out with, I guess we'll start at the beginning. You know, you and I met and fell in love and all, wah, that, wah, wah. Yeah, all that funky stuff that happens in the movies. <laughs> but the kids, okay, so the kids, your kid was about three when we met. Yes. Mine was seven, eight. Eight. So they're eight. So I have triplets. They were eight and then a nine-year-old. Actually, it was the triplets' eighth birthday when we met. Okay. Yep. All right, so we met. See and, how he didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. Well, it's because I... Okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so they're thinking, well, what was I doing on their birthday? I think we had their birthday party a different day. That's probably why. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember something about a party, but I can't go into that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we... Wait like, a minute. What? What about the party? I brought you to the party. That was Avery's. I brought you to some party, some party, some party, some party. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. <clears throat> you so, get me going down these rabbit holes. So well, quit. I, you said something happened at a party and I'm know, thinking we I just know. met that day. I so what be. other chick you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> There's not any other chicks. I've yeah. never, ever dated anybody but you. And that's because you're awesome. <laughs> you were waiting for me, darling. The whole time. The whole time. So <laughs> we, <laughs> so we, uh, we got, uh, we got together. <laughs> we decided to get married, and we had, uh, I wouldn't say it was super short, but it wasn't a very long engagement either. I mean, we were together for, uh, I guess, all all in, maybe a year? Year and a half. Okay. We met in May and got married in October we were of on the and next off. year. We were on and off for a year and a half. <laughs> we were on and off for a year and a half. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 you might be right with that. There was um, some hiccups in the beginning. Yeah. So about them girls you wasn't dating. <laughs> I was not dating those girls. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we we finally get married. The kids love everybody, right? Everybody loves everybody. Mm-hmm. But the kids were all excited about it. They were excited to have this new stepbrother in the mm-hmm. mix. Uh, you know, Jackson was excited. He was young. He don't think he cared one way or the other what we did. Uh, you know, we, you and I were excited. We had done a ton of research. Yeah, at least six months oh, of yeah. reading. I did the most reading. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I that, would say read this and tell me what it is. Yeah, <laughs> reading, research, articles, blog posts, books, talking to other step families. Mm-hmm. I mean, we really oh, yeah. researched this because we knew that it wouldn't be easy, mm-hmm. and we wanted to give ourselves the best chance that we could. Right. Because we didn't want to go into this blind. We might as well have. Well, that's what we figured out, right? (laughs) Yeah. With all this knowledge and this information that's out there and all these things we read up on, fantastic material, but we still still weren't prepared. One thing that um, we had mentioned before is once we got married, we quit doing research. Mm -hmm. And we probably shouldn't have. No. No, we shouldn't. Well, once once we started back on the other side of the problems, then we did 
jump back into doing a lot more research. Mm -hmm. uh, you particularly. Always me. So, <laughs> this is your thing, baby. Yeah. So, so we, about what, year two is, I mean, not like, it didn't just click year two, we started having problems. We we had problems maybe after year one, that's kind of where they started creeping in. Mm -hmm. But by the time year two rolled around, the problems were full blown. Like it was bad. Yeah. Yeah, it was bad, y'all. And I mean, it was bad where I did not want to come home, even though my own child was here. Mm -hmm. I love my baby, but I just, I did not want to come home. I dreaded coming home. It was, it was miserable. The kids didn't like me. I didn't like them. I felt like my son was the redheaded stepchild and they were <laughs> picking on him on the playground. And, oh, it was crazy. I mean, absolutely crazy. And then we had the in-laws. Yeah. Well, no, but nobody wanted to come home. Like, yeah. I didn't want to come home. The kids didn't want to come back from their moms over here mm -hmm. half the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember having to go pick them up and it taking half an hour to get everybody in the car because mm -hmm. it's just, it was pulling teeth. Like, come on, let's go. Nobody wants, everybody was miserable. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Thank God we didn't have a dog or they'd have been miserable too. <laughs> well, I think my little boy wasn't miserable because, um, at such a young age, they look at things differently. They don't think, oh, well, yesterday this kid was mean to me, so I'm not going to play with them today. You know, he, yeah, he just didn't have a, that mentality. Kind of a reset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so part of our research was we went and met with a counselor that I knew that I had met through court-ordered counseling for co-parenting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what a joke. And <laughs> we... Went for that. And so when David and I started talking about getting married, I was like, hey, let's go talk to this guy. And he was like, okay. So we went and talked to him and he gave us some good advice. Mm -hmm. Things went pretty good, I think. Nothing that we hadn't read, nothing new. I don't think he really gave us any insights then. It was just, you know, it's not easy, but blah, blah, blah. Try this. Right. And, and um, so when things started going to crap or had already gone to crap, I called him. And when he heard my voice, he's like, hey. <laughs> and he knew I would call back. Yeah. It just was a matter of time before I called back. And we went and met with him. And Yeah, because that was our last ditch effort, really. Oh, yeah. That was it. We had already met with the counselors at church. Mm -hmm. because and apparently, I, you'd already met with an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I already had who I was going to use in my head. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there really wasn't nothing to attorney eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I th I we think probably we could both, have got an annulment at that point. I think we both, maybe maybe mentally and emotionally, we kind of had one foot out the door. Yeah. yeah. Which is, the fact that we came back from that is amazing because usually once you've started that process, you know, we've always said to each other, look, when I'm done, I'm done. Mm -hmm. And I think we were done. Yeah. And, and yet we still wanted to, to give it one last... <laughs> college try <laughs> it's not because I didn't love you because I did love you but a lot of it was too is I didn't want to uproot my kid mm -hmm. I wasn't doing that again that's oh, yeah. why when the suggestion came up of maybe we should live separately for a little while and then try to do the blend again not get divorced but just live separately that's why I'm like no, if, I, if I leave I'm not coming back Yeah, you don't escape the pits of hell and then go back well one thing for me <laughs> yeah well, for me, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to start over again because I, I knew that chances are I'm going to get into another relationship and have to deal with all the problems anyway. You better add how much you love me. Of course I love you. Yeah. I mean, that's a given. I remember one time asking <laughs> you if you wished I would die. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. Or like I was late coming home or something and I don't remember what made me think that, but I'm like, you know, he probably wishes I would die. Because that would fix everything. It would. What was my response? Are you crazy? <laughs> Maybe once or twice. No, I'm kidding. Maybe you didn't say that. <laughs> you said no. Yeah. So anyway, we met with that counselor and thank God he knew me enough that he knew how hard-headed I was and how headstrong I was and how he needed to approach me for it to be effective. And we were talking and he said, Lori, they are not your kids. And I was like, duh, I know how many kids I had and goodness, I didn't birth five kids. And, but at the same time, it did kind of hurt my feelings because I cared about them. Mm -hmm. 
even though they got on my nerves or annoyed me or whatever, I still cared about them. I mean, I'm not a bad person. I like kids for the most part. <laughs> and so I would say, okay, I know that. And then I'd say, but I don't want their teeth to fall out of their head from not brushing their teeth. And he'd say, Lori, they are not your kids. And I'd say, I know, but I don't want them to grow up and not graduate high school or not make something of themselves. Lori, they are not your kids. And I am not kidding. I swear he said that to me 82 times. Mm -hmm. Because you're so hard-headed. That's why I had to say it so much. (laughs) Let's not discuss that. (laughs) And so I said, um, you know, did you fall and hit your head? Because I'm like, really, this is getting annoying. And we were leaving. And because I was making fun of him. I can't say we were, but I was. And I kept going, all that man said to me is, they are not your kids. And then the next thing you know, the old Southern ease kicked in where I mix words together. And I'm like, they are not your kids. Mm. And we started laughing and it broke the tension. Me laughing or us laughing at yeah, it. We needed to laugh at that point. We, needed, we, had, yeah. we hadn't laughed in months. Yeah. <laughs> Except for probably at things we shouldn't have. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then it was like, and I know everybody makes fun of me when I say this, but it's true. It's like the clouds parted and the rays from heaven came down. And I'm like, wait a minute. They are not my kids. I am creating my own misery. If mm-hmm. I don't fuss at them for not doing something, then they can't blame me for such and such. And I remember riding home. It's probably a good thing. It was a good 45 minute drive and thinking all this stuff. And when I came home, it was like I was a different person. I said, okay, I'm going to disengage fully. They're not my kids. I'm going to treat them like a friend's kid. Um, I'm not going to engage with them in any type of interaction that could be considered negative or could turn negative. And that's what I did. And it wasn't easy. It was not easy, especially for me to keep my mouth shut. Mm-hmm. Um, I, like. I felt, <laughs> hey, you, you no, better retract lot, that. No, you're a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of the times... Stepmoms think that we need to tell the bio dad how to parent. Mm -hmm. And they don't parent like we think they should. And the thing is, they're not going to parent like you think they should. And that's okay. Yeah. Sometimes they don't parent like they think they should. Exactly. We've talked about that plenty of times. Mm -hmm. And so when the kids would do something, even if they were just roughhousing with each other, I would think that David would need to step in and say, stop. And this could be as simple as I grew up in a house with girls. David had four boys. They liked a rough house. He didn't see a need for them to stop, but mm-hmm. I did. And I would get mad if he didn't tell them to stop. Because I'm thinking, you just let them do whatever the crap they want to. So by me learning to keep my mouth shut and learning the tools that I needed to not engage or to help myself approach things differently, basically watched every episode of House Hunters International. <laughs> I don't know if they even have that show anymore. I'm not sure. I'll have to look. But I'm not kidding when I tell you that it came to the point that I want to go sell goat cheese on the side of a mountain because that seems so much more appealing than the four youngins in my living room yeah. or the blend. Just, that just we anything having. to escape it. Anything. Dude, I didn't care if I didn't ever take a bath again. I just wanted to get, <laughs> you know, sell goat cheese, live in the straw hut. It's okay. <laughs> you know, we can do this. <laughs> I remember when I disengaged, like I said, it was hard. It was really hard for me not to tell them to be quiet or to tell them to do their homework or tell them to put their plates up. I just really had to step back. And it was um, a lot of mental stuff with me where I had to like actually think before I spoke. (laughs) Imagine that. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't know that I'd ever done that before in my life. (laughs) Yeah, You never had to. No, I never had to. But I learned so much through that process. And then I remember, let's see, I disengaged for about a year. Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, oh, my God, that's a long time. Well, yeah, but we had two and a half years of hurt that we had to heal from. And not just me, but the kids, too. Oh, yeah. And I remember being in the bedroom watching House Hunters International one day. Mm -hmm. And I heard them all, and they're laughing and cutting up, David and, of course, my son. And they're all laughing and having a jolly good time and I'm like oh yeah they having a good old time oh, Lori's stuck in here watching TV and then I'm like wait a minute I don't have to be that way 
And so I got up and went in the living room and I was like, hey, what are y'all laughing about or what are y'all doing something? And I got involved. I engaged in that conversation. And within probably 10 minutes or so, one of the kids did something, whether it was hit the other one or something that I felt like you should have said, hey, don't do that. And you didn't. But that was okay. So I just went back in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned to re-engage slowly. And another thing that we did, I know I would send you text messages Mm -hmm. because I couldn't just keep my mouth shut. And it's okay, people, if you can't, we can teach you how. And I would send you a text message and say, Ethan's not doing his homework because you would be in the office working or something. And I would be in the living room folding clothes or whatever. And he would be sitting there spinning a pencil around. (laughs) And you would come out and say, hey, why aren't you doing your homework? Well, he had no idea that I had sent you that text. Right. So it removed me as the target, but I was still able to get it out. Yeah. And you were able to find out about it and deal with it. Instead of you yelling through the house, Ethan's not doing his homework. Yeah, or yelling at Ethan. Yeah. You know, why aren't you doing your homework? Another reason to hate me for hollering at him for doing their homework. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, so I did that for a little bit, but then I got to where I didn't even do that. It was more of... You may want to check on the kids. It sounds like somebody might have broke a nose or something. You know what I mean? You know, when they start play fighting or something. Yeah. And so we came a long way with that. And now with the stepkids, I think that um, for the most part, I have great relationships. Some of them I'm closer to than others. I think that's normal with anybody, though. Oh, yeah. You do that even with your own kids. They know I love them. I know they love me. And they also know what we all went through. And I think they appreciate us as a married couple a lot more because they know that we didn't give up. Even with all the efforts they put in (laughs) to burning me at the stake, (laughs) I can see them now. Can't you see it in your head? You know, I feared that for a long time. Like you would come home and find me bound and gagged in the closet. Not my kids. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I can see it. The TP drawn and everything. (laughs) Mary's going, okay, y'all get her from here. And Yeah. (laughs) So it was interesting having four kids against me. Also, the in-laws. Yeah, we're we're a close family, like literally. Yeah, like literally. <laughs> like and next door neighbors. Yeah, I remember that one day that um, oh, I probably shouldn't remember that day. Sorry, it brought back some bad memories when I thought about it. But basically, I had told Branson to sit inside till you got home because he hit Jackson. Mm-hmm. And then your mom came down here and started babying Branson. Yeah, that was the day that it all exploded. Yeah. Yeah. That was the day it exploded. And we struggled through it. And I don't know how we would have done it if it wasn't for Nacho Kids. We wouldn't have done it. No. We wouldn't have made it. No. And we didn't realize at the time that Nacho Kids was born that day. Yeah. But it didn't take long for, I'd say within the first week, we definitely saw improvements. Oh, yeah. Because we, you and I both were at the point where if we didn't see something happen quickly, some progress Mm -hmm. that we weren't going to go through this another month or two or five or whatever. Mm -mm. It had to be something quick. Now we didn't have to get completely out of the woods. (laughs) Right. But something had to change. I mean, you and I both were at the point where something doesn't change quickly and we're done. Mm -hmm. I guess for me, it was almost instantaneous that I felt like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders because it was like, Hey, wait a minute. They're not my responsibility. Mm -hmm. They're your responsibility. My job is to help you and support you in your decisions, not try to tell you how to parent your kids. Right. So we started all that, and I was in a couple of stepmom groups, probably just one, to be honest with you, because I don't even know that Facebook was really kicking back then. Yeah, it was, because I remember selling your pictures or something. Remember that? Selling pictures on Facebook? You sold my pictures? You could sell people's pictures. Like, people would bid on your pictures. Okay, sorry. What? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, somebody so knows. So you were selling, my, what kind of pictures of me were you selling? <laughs> I'm afraid. You were selling pictures too? I don't even remember what it was, but it was something where like people could quote, quote, buy your pictures, but it wasn't real money or anything. Uh, uh, you okay. lost me on this one, but now I'm afraid that I have pictures of me floating around. Don't worry about them from me, honey. Worry about them from other people. Look, I had no other people in my life. <laughs> And um, so anyway, I'm sure there's somebody out there that remembers that whole thing on Facebook. Or was it MySpace then? <laughs> it might have been MySpace. I don't I, know. I can't remember. You old. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 
Um, mm. So anyway, we, I was in a group, a Facebook group, and with some other stepmoms that were struggling, and I was telling them what I was doing. And so a few of them started doing the things that I had had success with, mm. and they were like, hey, man, this crap works. <laughs> and so through my journey, I shared with them what I was doing and how things were improving and things like that. And again, they were still seeing success with it. And I finally created a secret Facebook group and called it Nacho Kids mm-hmm. and had members that could only come in if you were invited. So that way um, it kind of weeded out people, I guess. Right. Because even straight off the bat, People don't like the term nacho kids. Right. They think it's bad. Well, I think it's funny. Yeah. It's not my fault you don't have a sense of humor. <laughs> I mean, it is funny. No, well, I mean, we've had a ton of people before you even started really doing this as a business, tons of people were like, man, that is an awesome name. Mm-hmm. You know, it is so memorable and it's, and it's funny. And, and of course, you know, that's how it was born was you and I laughing about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and we needed that laughter. Making fun of myself saying they are nacho kids. Yep. Yeah, but I think you probably remember right off the bat, once Nacho Kids came about, um, I started getting some slack about it. And I talked to you. I was like, I'm not changing the name. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because that's where this came from. Mm, I remember that. Yeah. Then there's people still, why don't you change the name? You could help more people or people wouldn't be so turned off by it because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Quit trying to sugarcoat your life, people. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway. We started the, um, I had that Facebook group for a little bit, and then David created, about the same time, it was probably really close to the same time that I created that group, mm-hmm. that you created the website. Right. So I built a, I built a website for you, and it was kind of for just journaling and venting and you know, putting things out there that you'd learned or, or dealt with or dealing with. And it really, was, it really was meant just for you. It wasn't really meant to be read. About the whole by, world. By everybody. And it was, at the time, it was nachokids.org because .com was taken. And uh, and so that was kind of my gift to you. I don't remember if it was an occasion, like it was your birthday or what it was. But I remember I'd worked on that. I don't know how long it took me, but I worked on it for days or weeks or whatever. It didn't tell you I was doing it. Mm-hmm. And then one day I'm like, hey, I got you a present. And come here and check this out. And and so, yeah, well, he's so awesome. And I'm not just saying that because he's in my face right now <laughs> and because he helps me with the academy and the podcast. I'm not saying it all that. <laughs> anyway. Um, it, and I was, I really hoped that you would pick it up and do something with it because I thought it would be a good way to help you. Little did I know it would be a way that eventually started helping other people as people started finding it and reading it and resonating with it and then contacting you like, wow, that that post that you put on there and that's exactly what I'm going through. And it helped me so much to, to read it and understand that and, and try what you were trying. And, and so that was kind of, I think the point at which you were like, wait a minute, I, I can start using this to help other people. Mm -hmm. And all this doesn't have to be in vain. We can look at it as we, we went through this for For a a reason. Yeah. Right. And if you, if we look at it that way, or at least for us, we look at it that way. It's almost like, you're happy about it? That well, your trials strange. become your testimonies, and it makes you feel like that, like you said, there's a reason behind it. There's a purpose. There's, yeah. we overcame that just so we could help other people. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know how you feel about it, but for me, I almost feel thankful that, oh, yeah. I, that I, we went through it, which sounds strange, but because having the ability to, to help other people to see that on their face, like in the academy when we're doing the, the video calls and we see that click with them, we see them going from literally crying and the hopeless look on their face to you, you just see it. You see it lift off of them. Like they're smiling and they have this look on their face like they have hope and and there's and now they have a way to get out of the problems they're in. I mean, that's just amazing. I can't say enough about that that part of it yeah we've um had some struggles with the facebook group we did a public facebook group Mm -hmm. closed whatever it is it's um not secret so people can find it right and i decided to do that about a year ago Mm -hmm. and there was a gap in between stuff i don't even know that i did blog posts for a while 
because I found that by me staying in the groups and hearing other people's stories, it just brought up the um, past hurt and the emotions that I had when that happened to us or when we were going through it. So I had to nacho the nacho group a little bit <laughs> and step back because um, it it was unhealthy. That's the only way I know how to say it. It was yeah. unhealthy. And then I got over that mm-hmm. and I started being more involved and said, well, you know, let me create a public group so I can help more people instead of just the people in the secret group that are only added. It's almost like you had to have the secret code to get in. You had to be a stepmom saying certain things in a group and basically get bashed in another group for you could join our group. We were like the <laughs> island for misfit stepmoms. Yeah, I mean, really, I think that's what it is. You know, the misfit toys. Yeah. That's what we are. We're the misfit stepmoms. And we created that, I don't even, May of last year, I think it was. Mm-hmm. So a little bit over a year ago, and we've got 6,000 members, which is pretty good. Oh, that's awesome. And then I started doing the one-on-one coaching. Mm -hmm. and we had some issues with that. We were limited with time. There was only so many people you could help a day. Yeah, and you were working a full-time job. Yeah, I was working full-time, and then even though you might only spend an hour on the phone with a person, there's still two to three hours worth of work behind each call. Yep. And we were just limited. Or you you just didn't have the bandwidth to help enough people to to make that much of a difference. Right. And I, I mean, we had great success with it, but it just, that, that just wasn't the way that for us to go. No. Cause when you look at it, you're like, okay, I can help four people a month. <laughs> yeah. And that just kind of made me sad. <laughs> and then we, um, teetered around with the Academy mm-hmm. and mainly I, I'd say, let's see the top five reasons that we created the Academy was because one-on-one coaching was, Limited by our time. Yeah. Well, not only not only was it limited, but it's also expensive to do one-on-one. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't feel right charging people. <laughs> and then the Facebook issue where you've got, well, there's several Facebook issues. That could probably number two through four <laughs> where you've got, yes, there's people there that feel your pain and you can um, understand where they're coming from and you don't feel alone, but at the same time, um, David and I say that it's like having an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting in a bar. You're trying to get help from people that are struggling just like you, and they don't know what to do, rather yeah. than looking through to somebody that's been through it. Yeah. And in the Facebook group, there's so many people, and you can make a post. Whatever gets commented on gets bumped to the top. So I could comment something or post something about how to nacho, and then the next thing you know, it's kicked down to the bottom and nobody sees it. Mm-hmm. And then we had people that um, give him very, very bad advice in the group. And so I would address it and say, this is not nachoing. You know, please don't refer to it as that because I don't want people thinking that's what it is. And then they want to argue with me about what it is, which, (laughs) you know, makes no sense. We talked about that the other day. Yeah. It's, you know, here it is. It's a process and a methodology that, that you created or we created for years of work. Right. So we, we got this, you know, thing we've created and it's, it works in a specific way. And then you got other people going, no, that's not how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> how can you tell me <laughs> that's not how you do something that I've put together? Yeah. <laughs> and so when stuff like that happens, I t- I'm telling you, it makes me want to go, you know what? Forget it. The blended family failure rate can jump up to a hundred percent. I don't care. Cause these people are getting on my nerves. <laughs> And then within, you know, an hour or so, it never fails. I'll get a message, a private message or an email or a comment or something. And somebody will say, thank you so much. You've saved my marriage. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we've even had people, we've literally saved people's lives. We don't bring that up a lot. Um, but we have, we have had people message us and say. Um, you stopped me from killing myself. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, even every time we talk about it, so it's. it's it's like, oh my gosh, it's, it's overwhelming that that it makes that kind of impact. Yeah. Well, it makes me kind of sad and happy. Honestly. Well, it makes you sad that people get to that level of despair. But I can understand it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. The, the blended stuff. Woo. 
you know, it's rough. Yeah. And and what we're talking about here, you know, we, we make it sound simple and we make it sound like this was a real quick thing, but it wasn't. This it was not it's simple steps, but it is very difficult. It is very, very difficult and it's very time consuming mm-hmm. to really dig yourself out of this hole because most people don't come looking for help at the first sign of a problem. I mean, every so often we'll get somebody that joins the academy and they're like, how long have you been having problems? Oh, three months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> every mm-hmm. so often. Or I'm not married yet. I'm just trying to figure out things. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm like, wow, I wish I'd have you know, been able to do that. Mm-hmm. I wish, wish there was a Not Your Kids Academy when we were getting married. Uh, but most people really wait until it's like a last ditch effort. Mm-hmm. When they're, when they hate each other. Yeah. And by that point it's hard. And it, it is just the same as, you know, going to the doctor and waiting too long. You know, mm-hmm. You've waited too long to go to the doctor and, but you, you know, now you have full blown. Double pneumonia. You know, right. And it's like, okay, fix this. It's like, okay, but it, it's going to take a lot of work mm-hmm. and it's going to be painful yep. because you waited too long. So but it's still amazing. Still amazing uh, what can come out of it. Okay. So we started the <laughs> Academy, right? Yeah. We started the Academy about a year ago. Um, the Academy, we offer video courses. Yeah. A whole library of video courses. That we add to every month. Uh-huh. We have a private community where you don't have to worry about somebody. I didn't ever finish my fives. <laughs> That's why we started the Academy. <laughs> Okay, goodbye. All right, back up, people. Here we go. <laughs> Number one, I remember, was the limitations of time. Right. Number two was Facebook. Number two <laughs> through four was Facebook. Yeah. One of them was the bad advice on Facebook. Right. Number three was we, I said one and three, you used to catch that. Um, the other part of the Facebook thing was it's hard for us to teach it. Yeah. You know, in that atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And then... Also, the privacy of Facebook. Oh, yeah. It happens in every group, not just the Nacho group. So don't just think it's my group that somebody screenshots something and sends it to their significant other and or the bio mom or whatever. You just don't have any privacy on Facebook. Right. And we tell people to lock their page down and then they fuss when their stuff, ha- when it happens because they don't lock their page down. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. It's- so that was four reasons that we created the Academy. And the fifth one I would say is to be able to more directly help those that wanted help and to be able to help them focus on the path to nacho properly. Yeah. Because it's not a one day thing. Mm -mm. I can't teach you how to nacho in a 20 minute post on Facebook. It involves self-awareness. It involves changing your mindset it involves a lot of hard work and using a lot of different tools to be able to implement this process properly. Yep. And if you don't do it right, it's not going to work. No. And a lot of people think that it's okay. I just, I just need to ignore my stepkids. No. Or I just need to go, you know, you talk about going in the room and watch TV. I just need to go and, and remove myself and go in the room and watch TV. That's part of it, but that's not, anywhere near all of that's just scratching the surface. And for some people that will work a little bit, like they get just enough relief by doing that one little thing that, you know, they're like, Oh, I'm not showing. It's great. Yeah. But man, it is so much more to it. A lot more. Yes. And it's not ignoring the stepkids as much as it's not engaging in negative interaction. Right. For instance, if stepkid two comes in Hadn't been here in a week. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? Or just say, hey. And they ignore me. It would make me mad. Well, is it disrespectful to ignore somebody when they tell you, hey? Yeah, maybe to some people. Maybe to to you, maybe it's not. Maybe it's you're looking at it. Well, they shouldn't have to say hey to somebody they don't want to. (laughs) Or, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I stopped saying hey. Right. Because if I didn't say hey, that didn't result in them ignoring me, which didn't result in me getting mad, which didn't result in me fussing with you about your kids being rude. It just stopped the whole cycle. Mm -hmm. And you just, you step back from the things that cause stress and anything that can be construed as negative interaction. Right. Because from your kid's point, me telling them to brush their teeth was completely different than you telling them to brush their teeth. Mm -hmm. You had that right. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of outside uh, interference when it comes to stepkids as well, a lot of times. 
So they they really could maybe want to like you and want to do what you say. But when sometimes, and I'm not saying necessarily our situation, <laughs> but sometimes you have bio parent loyalty. Right. You have the bio parent on the other side going, look, you don't do anything she tells you to do. Or don't tell her you love her. Right. You're not supposed to love her. You're not even supposed to like her. Yeah. Like you're don't even talk to her. Yeah. Um, I think we see that a lot when there's girls involved more so. I noticed that w- when I hear about how bad that is, it seems that there's there's daughters involved more so. It happens with boys too. Mm-hmm. But it seems like the daughters uh, can tend to be a little more harsh with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Well, I'm glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's why we created the Academy is to offer a safe place. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cause it's completely anonymous. Like we don't even know who some of the people I are sometimes. Know. Yeah. That's like one girl. I'm like, well, I can message you in the Academy, but you've got to tell me your name, your yeah. screen name, oh, like your stripper name in the Academy. Stripper name. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> What's your stripper name, Nacho Daddy? You know, we'll do the the coaching call, which is a it's a live video call. It's supposed to be an hour. Yeah, it usually ends up being two um, right, every two, two weeks. So, I mean, think about that. That's four hours. Um, well, even if we didn't do it over, just two hours. Yeah. Yeah. A month for that. I mean, it's crazy. And We're, then people can comment in the community or post in the community forum, and you or I reply to them with heartfelt thought out responses to where it's going to help them with their journey, not just some kind of crap off Facebook. Yeah. Well, when we first started the Academy, we're doing a, we're doing the coaching calls once a month. And, uh, and we quickly decided like maybe after the first or second one, we were like, we asked people that were there, you know, is, is once a month enough? And they were all like, no, we can't wait another, a whole month. Yeah. And so we talked about it and we're like, you know what, when people are having, problems and are struggling waiting another month mm-hmm. to get to a coaching call is an eternity. You, the, I mean, their relationship may fall apart at the time. That's why the community is so important too, because if somebody posts something within 24 hours, one of us responds or both. Yeah. Or both. Yeah, absolutely. It is because we knew how important that was when we were going through it. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, people, it's hard to understand until you're in the throes of it, but sometimes it seems like a life or death situation when you're fighting over the dishes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. really? Yeah. Well, should I make his kid do the dishes? No, you should not. <laughs> <laughs> that should be their dad. Or you, we have those um, things that are available in the in the academy, but we also do like challenges mm-hmm. to help people. Um, what would you say? Um, I don't even know what to call them. One of them's a boot camp. One of them's um, self love. I mean, there's several things that we're doing in there. Yeah. And to add to it, to give some more information. But one thing we do try to warn people about in our Facebook group is to be careful with the advice that you receive. Because of those 6,000 people, I would say less than 50 of them know what they're talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's and those 50 don't always comment. Right. <laughs> and it's like you said, when you put something out there and you ask a question, you might get some decent advice. But the problem is you've had 100 comments. And you don't know what's what. That you've got to filter through. And yeah, you're right. And you probably don't know what really is good advice. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are just going to tell you, I'd leave you and advise you. <laughs> <laughs> David hates it when they say, we, we try not to say that. As yeah. a admin of the group and our moderators, that's one of the things is unless these people are being physically abused, do not suggest that they just leave. Yeah. Well, we had not long ago that somebody posted something on the on, on the Facebook group or in the Facebook group, and this person would had been together with this, this uh, guy for like three years, I believe it was, and he did something stupid or whatever, wasn't terrible, but the number of people were like, "Yeah, you just need to leave. You just need to leave." Oh, it's it's easy to throw rocks. Yeah, and this and this one lady was like, "Um, you've got three years invested in this relationship." Why would leaving for this be an option? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, you should be mad, and yeah, that you need. There's some conversation needs to be had about this so that it doesn't happen again. But this is not something to throw away a relationship over, right? And that's something that we've discussed um, with members of the academy too, or even just people in general in the group. Is if you've got time invested in a relationship, if you leave, the probability of you being in another blended relationship is fairly high. In most cases, it's definite. Yeah. So why not <laughs> fix the one you got? Fix the one you got, or at least learn tools and ways to handle things for the next one. 
Yeah. I mean, don't just think that it's the relationship itself. A lot of times people find out that uh, in their, in their mind, they're thinking, okay, I'm just going to use a, uh, the husband being the bad guy. Right. So they're thinking, uh-huh, just use that one. Okay. Well, I'm doing it anyway. So they're thinking the husband's a bad guy. Right. And they joined the Academy. We had this recently joined the <laughs> Academy and they're like, you know, tell you, know, they're telling you all these things that that's going on. And, and then, okay, <laughs> we start talking to them and they go, you know what? I'm, I'm discovering that I'm the problem. I'm the biggest part of the problem. I thought that my, my husband was the problem. Mm-hmm. And now you're telling me that I'm the problem. No, I didn't tell you the problem. I'm telling you what's going on. You're discovering that you're, you're a big part of the problem, but you're not the only problem. There's a lot of things around that. But I remember telling this particular person, I was like, be glad you're the problem because if it were him, you can't change him. You can change you. Right. And, uh, and she was like, Oh, that's a good point. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, I think there's another way we need to come up with a phrase in that. And it's not to sugarcoat things, but nobody wants to feel like they're the problem. No. And and it's, it's not a one person problem. And never is even with us. I mean, you say it a lot of times that, Oh, I found out I was the problem. I mean, well, yeah, because I was like, why am I the only one having to change? Well, yes. But even though, you feel like you were the problem. It was your reactions to things that were the problem and the ways you were handling some of the things were the problem. But some of the other problems was the fact that I was putting things on you and asking you to take on a role that you shouldn't have been doing. And so I can't say you were the problem. Part of the problem was what I was doing and what I was expecting. It was all his fault, folks. (laughs) All his fault. It was all my fault for marrying her. Yeah. One (laughs) One of the things that, um, talking about people's responses and stuff on Facebook is you can tell the people that have been in the Academy or that are members of the Academy because their responses six months ago, their responses now are completely different. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, Oh, I wouldn't go for that crap or, or, you know, whatever to what you need to do (laughs) is da, 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 da. I know it's not easy, but I know you can do it. And here's some tools, you know, it's, um, it makes my heart happy to see other people be able to benefit from the struggles that we went through. Oh yeah. I remember talking to you about when Nacho kids started getting attention. I'm like, do, but do we really want our dirty laundry for the world to see? Oh yeah. That's, I mean, yeah, we had a big conversation about that because I think you and I both felt like that if it was going to be effective, that we had to really strip away, you know, the, the facade, not that it ever was one, but we couldn't hold, we couldn't have one. We had to be very, very honest and truthful about the challenges we faced and still face about mm-hmm. things. I and mean, there's, there's conversations we have in the Academy now where it's like, yeah, we had a sucky day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know. Um, but I think with me being my introverted self, that was harder for me. Cause I didn't want to be in the grocery store and somebody be like, Oh yeah, you the one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the nacho kids or something. Yeah. I mean, because you got, you know, your pictures out there and the pictures of the kids is out there. And I mean, we tell everybody everything. I've never been one to not tell somebody the truth or to not share things. I've always been very open, um, maybe to a fault. I probably tell people stuff they don't want to know. Mm-hmm. But it's something that um, it's, it's who I am. We're going to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly, the we're not going to try to sugarcoat it and make life better because there wasn't nothing sugarcoated in our journey and our struggles and things like that. No, no. But when we help other people, when we get to doing the step family coaching that you and I do, it's very necessary that the people we've talking to are, are super honest and open as well, because if they neglect to share everything, then we oftentimes will miss something that is a, really a critical point we have to address. And so we're asking, you know, we're asking other people to be that way with us. And so I think it helps that we're that way with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And you can't really go to somebody for help and not be open with them or not be honest with them. Mm -hmm. It's better to trust the person that you're working with. And I guess that's one of the biggest things too, is these people trust us to help them. Yeah. And that's important to me. It's important to me that they're successful because I want them to experience the good side of the blend 
that we have experienced or are experiencing. I agree. All right. So now we have the Academy and then, and then one day you decided. <laughs> Lord help my soul. Did I decide to do this? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. We decided to do the podcast. Yep, so we decided to do the podcast. So within a little over a year, we've created the open Facebook group or whatever you call it. Closed group. The not your kids Academy yep. and starting the podcast. Yep. And then the original nachokids.org was created in 2013. Yeah, 2013. So six years ago. Mm-hmm. Wow, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So what is the people that are listening to the podcast, what are they in for? Yeah, in for the ride of your life. <laughs> you are in for hearing real stories from real people that are struggling or have been through the struggles that you are going through that can offer um, advice that they have learned that helped them. We also will have professional guests mm-hmm. and their advice and their knowledge. And our goal with the podcast is to reach more people and to be able to help them survive the blend and not be part of the 72%. Right. And recently, I have made my mission or the Nacho Kids mission to be to lower the percentage of failures of blended families. Good job. So you're going to lower it to what, 50%? Plus 72, nope, 40. Wow. That's what you call a big, audacious, hairy goal. Okay. <laughs> a big, audacious, hairy goal. But look where we were and look where we are. And if we can come back from that, just say 50% of the people that we deal with aren't even where we were, then yeah, definitely. And even if it's not through us, it's, you know, there's other stepmom coaches that are going to be on our podcast mm-hmm. that may resonate with other people or, you know how you click with people. Oh, yeah. Some people might not just like you, David. (laughs) That's not possible. It is possible. (laughs) And some people might have an issue with my Southern twang. (laughs) I know that's ridiculous to think. (laughs) But then some people are just, um, if you've ever been to a counselor, they just sit there Mm. and they're quiet. Well, That's not us, folks. Mm. (laughs) We are not quiet. We do get in rabbit holes. We have found that the rabbit holes is where some of the best information is. Oh, yeah. That's when we get rolling. But we work really hard with all of these things that we're doing to try to help step families. And that's my purpose in life. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. So that's it then, right? Are you, are, are we done or are there more things you're going to be rolling out this year? Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> oh, crap. There is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's always more. Yeah, there's always more. Don't look at that blackboard behind me. That's got all the stuff I need to be doing. Blackboard, you can tell you're old. <laughs> I said Blackboard, didn't I? (laughs) Yeah, so we hope to um, have people on here that, as guests, that will somehow give you some tidbit of information for you to take away and to help your blend. Yep. So it was all worthwhile if we're able to help somebody else. Well, definitely. But I want want somebody to say, your podcast helped me, and then I'll feel better about all this stuff we've been doing. (laughs) All this work you put into it? (laughs) Yeah, all this 20 hours for this one (laughs) podcast. All right, okay. folks, you heard her. Go to notyourkids.com, click on, go to the contact page, send her a message. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, you could just email Lori, which is really D A V I D. But yeah, send us a message. And um, we have all kind of connections with other step family coaches. And I like to work with people as a team. We're not against each other. And Little Susie over there, stepmom coach, she's trying to do the same thing that I'm doing and save blended families from disaster. And I think that if little Susie and I can work together, the better off that we can be to help other people. Yeah. Oh, we got something else coming up too, remember? No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. I think that's it. All right, folks. Well, that is episode one of the Nacho Kids podcast. Episode zero, zero, one. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. All right. Thank you for listening. Oh, wait. We're going to tell them when we're going to come back. Oh, we're coming back every Friday in your podcast player. Is there a time? <laughs> it, when you wake up Friday, it'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When you wake up Friday, we are going to be there, people. Unless you're in Japan, then it'll be Saturday morning, Friday, Friday night. night. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. We just mess with y'all. We don't know. No, it'll be Fridays. And All right. So until next week. Remember, life is good when you nacho. 
Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nacho Kids Podcast. Find us online at nachokids.com. Until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho.